Good evening. Welcome to another segment of Take Back Your Life. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. I want to welcome everyone here to a new segment for today, August 9, 2014. Today's topic, which I choose to call Five Reasons That I or You Can Fall in Love with Sobriety. Now, these are my five reasons that I could come up with, and also I did some clinical background search on what some of the signs are of sobriety and, and the benefits of sobriety. So I kind of threw them all together, pasted them onto my laptop as usual. So we're going to dive right into it. Five Reasons Why uh, I Fell in Love with Sobriety. And I'm going to read this part to you. When we were out there, wherever we are using drugs and alcohol it can seem like there is nothing better out there and that's why we were doing it because there was nothing better out there we felt hopeless and if there is some hope or something better out there it doesn't sound like it's worth it in fact many addicts whether or not they admit it believe that being in love with sobriety is boring why would that be boring I'll tell you why, because they don't know what it's like to be sober. They have not gone onto that side, and that is why. They might ask, what is there to do when you're sober? What is there to do? I might as well just get high. So that might be your question. What is there to do? I mean, if you're sober, what are you, you're not going to go and have a good time? I beg to differ. I will tell you, sobriety is wonderful, and these are my five top reasons that I fell in love with sobriety. Here is how it goes. But trust me on this, if getting sober wasn't worth it for this addict, I wouldn't be in love with sobriety today. I'm going to read what I wrote. I fell in love with my way I felt about myself. I fell in love with the way I looked again. Look at my appearance. If you would have seen me before June, 13, uh, June 22nd, 2013, last year, it was totally different. I fell in love with helping other people. What I'm doing right now is hopefully helping someone out there. And that's what I'm falling in love with. And that's why I'm contemplating, not, not even contemplating. Now, at this point, I have decided that I'm going to continue my education in helping others and, and uh, either being a substance abuse counselor or being a uh, addiction recovery coach more or less it's probably going to be the addiction recovery coach Can, let me continue I fell in love where I lived we have moved my wife and I we live out here in the Hamptons uh, we've been out here about maybe six months now so that's a little bit less than uh, um, half, I mean, my sobriety, which is a year and two months, and it's a whole new change. And we speak about these things constantly during all my videos about how, when you seek sobriety and you actually going through change in, in your own life as far as addiction, that change of surroundings is is so recommended. So, I fell in love with where I lived. I fell in love with the integrity. I fell in love with my new friends, my sober friends, you out there, my Facebook friends. I fell in love with family again. I fell in love with being a big brother and a and a son. That's what I fell in love with because I am a big brother. I am a son. I'm a husband. I f I'm falling in love with all those things that I've been missing out on due to my addiction. I, I fell in love with being a good example. I would hope to God that you folks, when you watch my videos, you say, geez, I want to I wanna hopefully feel what he's feeling with sobriety. I want to see what he's talking about, the changes, the, the happiness. So that is uh, a, a sure sign. I fell in love with the way I carried myself. That is the biggest one because when we are addicted to drugs and or alcohol, we stumble, we slur our words, we really do not look like functional, well-balanced humans. Sobriety brings that right back to you. Uh, I fell in love with the way I carried myself. Like I just said, I fell in love with my spirituality. I have now, since I've become sober, actually been clear enough to realize that my God, our God, is a big part of my life. Not to the, to the sense of uh, uh, some Christians that are out there, but to the sense that I do realize that without God, I cannot live. I fell in love with the uh, uh, certain, uh, like smoothies. I fell in love with fruits. With uh, I've always been in love with junk food, but with fruits and vegetables, I'm, I'm falling in love with that because before I was uh, too, too heavily involved with my vodka, so I didn't even care about my health. But most of all, I fell in love with my life, my sober life. 
So if you're wondering why you should fall in love with sobri uh, sobriety, I'm here to tell you here are five reasons why you should fall in love with sobriety. Number one, no more fear, dread, or feelings of shame or guilt. Folks, when you would have blackouts, when you would have memory lapses, when you would stumbling, when you couldn't speak, although at the time of our addiction and our drunkenness or our drugs, we might have not felt guilty, but the day after is always a guilt trip. The week after, when people bring it up to you, it's a guilt trip. When you are sober, you get to know what it feels like to be in the present moment and not just, but stay in the present moment. You are happy and free knowing that you are sober right in this moment. Right now, you're sober. You were sober yesterday. You'll be sober tomorrow, hopefully. But I do advise that we go 24 hours at a time, so let's stick with that. Tomorrow, there will be no waking up in the house wondering, how did you get there? There won't be any withdrawal. And there won't be any dread of knowing that you're going to spend one more day hurting you, your family, and your friends. Number two, meet the best friends ever. Sober friends are the best friends ever. And I'll explain what that means. Meaning that the people that I've met due to my sobriety, due to my website, due to my videos, have become friends that I didn't have before. I was never really into having a lot of friends, although I do have acquaintances and I do have what people choose to call friends, but I'm talking about really good friends. My sober friends, people like um, a couple of them on Facebook, um, my sober friends know what I'm going through. I know what they've gone through and we know what we're going through daily. So those friends are welcome to my life. We survived this shipwreck together. My friends in, in uh, going through recovery and myself, we've survived this shipwreck together. Some of us have uh, seek sobriety before others, but at this juncture right now, we're all together in this. Hand in hand, brothers and sisters in recovery. Together we get better, together we stay in recovery. We feed off each other, we educate each other. I'm educating you. You folks can educate me. By all means, recommend things. When you get sober with people who have had a bond unlike any other of those to people that uh, really haven't experienced sobriety, that is such a magnetic bond, it is uh, beyond words. Oftentimes, I will make the best friends you I have ever known and will ever know in your lifetime. In other words, what does that really mean? You'll make new friends in sobriety that you'll never ever probably make in your lifetime together because most of the friends you have are either sociable friends or childhood friends. But these friends that you're making in sobriety, whether it be in your AA meetings or my, my get-togethers with the video or in the treatment center, those friends, you and them hand in hand in recovery and are going through the same thing together. You will watch the light come on your friends and and their friends and a group of people will become not only your support but will be so close they'll be like a family. What does that mean? That, that, that means we all are unity, we're a community, we, we bond together, we're in this, like I said, over and over again, hand in hand in recovery and it's such a good feeling. So the title is Meet the Best Friends Ever. That's not to say your friends that you had during your addiction are not your friends anymore. Of course they are. You can pick and choose your friends for certain situations, but for sobriety purposes, the friends that are hand-in-hand -in, -hand in recovery with you are your best friends. Now, number three, not hating yourself anymore. I used to hate myself, and I used to have those guilt trips that we just spoke about the next morning. Now, you're not hating yourself anymore. You're loving sobriety so much that you can walk head up, chest out, straight up, and feel good about yourself. I'm going to read some of this, okay? Most of us, when we enter into recovery, don't like ourselves very much. We don't. Why? Because according to us, there wasn't very much to like, and that's so true. You tell me if you're watching this and you're not in sobriety and you're thinking about it, that you truly like yourself. Do you really like yourself? I certainly didn't, and I'll be quite honest with you. When you get into recovery, you realize how awesome you really are and how much you have to offer to the world. I am potentially offering so many things I thought I could never offer. 
because I'm thinking with a clear mind. Sobriety gives you that. Sobriety gives you motivation, gives you a drive. Addiction, alcohol, and or drugs set you back. They pull you into this devilish little disease. Sobriety is something that you're going to love, and I guarantee you that. You will be okay with who you are. I can truly say I'm very happy of who I am. Yes, I wish I was more successful in certain things, but I am happy in who I am today. Because I certainly wasn't this person June 21st of 2013. And if you try to live with integrity, you will not only gain the respect of others, which I am, and I, and, and I respect you folks, you will also respect yourself and your choice will reflect that fact. Your choice in friends, your choice in daily living, your choice in sobriety. People will respect your choice as much as you'll respect theirs. Number four, remembering when you have fun. Isn't it great that you can actually remember going, let's say, to Splish Splash? A year ago, a year and a couple months ago, if I went to, let's say, Adventureland or to Dorney Park, I was intoxicated, so I really didn't remember things. Yeah, of course I remember going, but I wouldn't remember little details. So isn't it great that you can actually remember having fun? That is a step of loving sobriety. When you are using and drinking, the fun you do have is blurry, hazy, totally forgotten during a blackout. So was it really that much fun? No, it wasn't. In sobriety, whether you or your friends at a party, concert, out to eat, a show, whatever it be, you will remember it. You'll remember every aspect of it, the good and the bad, and hopefully it's mostly good. You will make the most amazing memories of spending nights out with those friends. You take the pictures. In those pictures, you're standing straight. Your, your skin looks good. Your eyes aren't dilated. You will take pictures and not look like a mess, like I just said. You will have wonderful memories that are no longer turned into sloppy, drooling disaster that you are that you are drinking or using. Do you remember those days? We'll speak about the drooling, the, the, the total mess that you might be in. We'll talk about that. Number five, being the person you want to be. Who do you want to be? Sobriety allows you to be, to give you that chance of being who you want to be. Realistically, we all have a purpose in life and we have a choice in life on who we want to be. And it's never too late to change in who you are, who you were, and then who you want to be. Let's get right to this title, being the person you want to be. When I, when I this is what me writing this now, when I first attempted to get sober, which was in 2013, I created my website. My website, and this gives me a good opportunity to jump right into this, my website www.clearviews.info, C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S dot I-N-F-O, has tons of material, has about 24 of my own videos on there where I testify about sobriety, I testify uh, about signs of uh, addiction, all sorts of things. On there also are articles and videos by doctor, psychiatrists, and psychologists. Those are the medical professionals, those are the people that are dispensing all advice and opinions. I merely just pass the information on to you, to, for you to utilize. So listen to the first sentence again. When I first attempted to get sober, and that attempt, uh, attempt it became permanent, which was in 2013, I created this website. And on my website, I wrote a list of all things I want to accomplish with sobriety. I remember doing this. This was last June. What were my goals? We spoke about this in um, maybe the last three, four videos about action plan. What were my goals? It all started with me with just a little list. My list, a lot of it was how was I going to set up my website? What information was I going to put on to my website? Who were my potential audience uh, 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 people to be? And of course it would be either alcohol, uh, alcoholics or drug addicted people or people in sobriety. That was my audience. You are my audience. You're either one of those uh, three. You're either addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol, or you're seeking sobriety, or you are sober. So it's actually four. Now, I wrote a list and I wanted to accomplish with sobriety. I wanted to write down the kind of person I wanted to be. I wanted to be exactly what I am today. I want to be better. 
I didn't write that back then because what I am now is far further exceeded than my expectations were uh, a year and two months ago. Each and every day I want to become better and I will become better and I'll become more confident as I approach this uh, addiction recovery coaching certification. I know that I can go in with the confidence of being able to speak, being able to speak either over phone, over Skype or in person. The only thing that I need to do is to educate myself on signs on methods on intervention and that's where that certification is going to come in hand and I know I'll do very well in it I read I wrote down things on this list such as accountability honesty loving caring trustworthy respected and needed those were the things that I needed in my future in sobriety those are the things that I have now uh, I believe achieve so let's go over to this I know that I am an honest person I am not the person that I used to be a lot of my dishonesty was because of my drinking and a lot of the dishonesty was the actual fact of hiding drinking and saying I wasn't drinking that is dishonest the loving part I do humble myself by listening and learning and not interrupting so that is uh, the um, loving part, and I and I do hopefully show more love to people around me. I hope the caring and loving kind of go hand in hand. The trustworthy people can depend on me. When I was uh, addicted to alcohol, my wife had such problems depending on me because she didn't know if I was going to black out or be in a corner drooling or whatever. I am now earning that trust back. To, to for her to actually hopefully depend on me a lot more than she could have done before June 22nd 2013 I know for a fact that I'm very much respected uh, not just by my colleagues in my profession but also by my audience as much as I want to respect my audience because respect is only earned when given I give you my respect. My respect given to you is, is, is trying to help you daily on a daily basis. So I know that I'm earning that respect. And, and I certainly want uh, to be, feel needed. I think every human in life needs to have that feeling of, of someone needing you for something. Makes you feel special, makes you feel wanted. I didn't actually want to be a person who lived their life well even when no one was looking. I wanted to be that person that no matter if you were looking at me or not, that I was a stable, well-balanced human that we spoke about. The well-balance is such an important thing and you cannot be a well-balanced human individual being if you are addicted to drugs or alcohol. You just cannot. And as of today, well today I am all of those things. I am. I can certainly improve myself on every single item that I just mentioned, but I am all of those. I have achieved my goal. My action plan went into effect and it has uh, uh, shown results. Being sober gives me the ability to choose who I want to be today. Like I am in, a, I'm in the optical field, but I also want to be an addiction recovery coach. I get to choose who I want to be. That's the ability that comes with sobriety. When I was using alcohol, it chose who I was going to be, who was going to control me, how people uh, would react to my irresponsible, unacceptable behavior. The alcohol was doing that. Today, I choose all those things. The need to get high makes me a liar, a cheat, a manipulator, and all of those terrible things. If I was going to do that again, that's exactly what I would be. Today, I can make a choice to be honest dependable, accountable, a hard worker, a loving friend, a husband, a son, a brother. Today I am all of those things that are I wrote on my list on my website. I didn't maybe write them in that order, but those were my goals. My action plan June 2013 was to be a better human being. And here we are, August 9th, 2014, mission accomplished yet I do need improvement. We all do. Let's go into uh, my third page that I have here and today I am in love with sobriety. My five, three, uh, my five reasons makes me to be in love with sobriety. Number one again is 
No more fear, dread, feeling of shame or guilt. Number two, meet the best friends ever. My better friends that I have now are sober friends and are friends that are hand in hand with me in recovery. Friends I probably haven't even met in person that we just chat, we text, we talk. Hand in hand in recovery. Number three, not hating yourself anymore. I do not hate myself. I have learned to love myself and by loving myself, it is so much easier to love other people because you cannot love others if you can't even love yourself. Number four, remembering when you have fun. When I go out now and I do things and I, I, I do a video and I stutter on this video, I can actually remember tomorrow doing this video today and where I actually maybe stumbled or stuttered. Having fun like that. Now, can you imagine if I sat on this, uh, doing this video and I was intoxicated? It'd almost be equivalent to my first video I ever did, and that was sober, and that was a, a, a total train wreck. It was a terrible video. Go on my website, www.clearviews.info, scroll halfway down, and you'll see it. You want to have a good laugh? Go ahead, go for it. Today, I'm respected for my actions because I am sober. I choose to be the person so I desperately knew I could be, and I choose to be that person that I want to be in the future. I want to better myself for the future. Luckily, I got sober, and while I'm not cured of my disease, remember, we always talk about this, that disease will be with you for the rest of your life. It is very unfortunate. It is not a curable disease, but it is a disease that you can work with and live with. I gave you an example yesterday in my video. At cancer, we go, when we have cancer, we go and we get treatment, chemotherapy. And that chemotherapy hopefully will extend your life with the disease of cancer. Well, here's how the addiction works. Sobriety and, and action plans with sobriety extends your disease and it gives you a better life, a longer life, hopefully. Uh, anyways, if you are thinking you don't want to get sober, I think you should take a hard look at yourself and see if it is really the person you know you are deep inside that you're looking at right now in the mirror. Is that really you or is that somebody uh, that's addicted to drugs and alcohol? Because when I look in the mirror, I can truly say that that is the person that I am. That is not the person that I was. That's not the person I want to be again. I never ever want to have a drop of alcohol going in me. I never had a drug problem, although alcohol is a drug, but I never f had a drug bl uh, problem per se. Alcoholism is the uh, disease inflicted within me, but I have learned to live with it and I have learned to battle it. Why wouldn't you want to be a good person? I already know that you are. That's what I wrote there. And I had to read it because there's so much to, to that's up here. So I do apologize that I have to gaze off a little bit, but it's, it, like I said, almost impossible. I wish I had a teleprompt like uh, President Obama straight ahead in front of me because it wouldn't be as noticeable, but I don't. So I make good on what I have. So why wouldn't you want to be the good person? I already know that you are. This is what I wrote because wh whoever you are, if you're watching and you've watched me now for 23 minutes, I know uh, that you're interested in, in seeking sobriety. I just know that. So it's just a matter of doing it now. Um, why wouldn't you want to be in love with sobriety? Why wouldn't you want to be in love with sobriety? There are five simple steps. Five reasons, I should say. Try it. If you try sobriety and you make it for two weeks and you have a relapse, don't go back into the old abuse. Remember, you just gained two weeks of sobriety in your life. Start all over again. And start all over again if it happens again. It took me six, seven times, like I've said in many other videos. Just continuously try. Eventually, you'll hit rock bottom and that'll be it. That's when you go full force sobriety and you head on uh, battle with addiction. Why wouldn't you want to have dreams, goals, and be that person that with a vision, a passion, a purpose, and respect? Let me just repeat that. Dreams, my dream is to become an addiction recovery coach. That is also my goal. I had that vision probably about maybe a couple weeks, no, maybe about a month ago. That was my vision, so it goes back to the vision. It's become a passion. God, folks, you you can see the videos that I'm pumping out into Facebook, onto Google, onto Twitter, onto uh, 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 my website. 
takes a lot of work to do these videos, a lot of preparing, because you got to remember I have to come up with the material, then I have to get the material written in such a way that I can communicate it, then I have to set it up around my laptop here, and then I have to effectively communicate that to you. And hopefully the impact of each and every video that I do is a big, huge plus in your life, and if not in yours, pass it on to a person. Guarantee you there's somebody in your life, whether it's a co-worker, a loved one, uh, a relative, someone in your life has an addiction problem with alcohol and or drugs. Pass my video on to them. Let me get back to this. Um, don't let your disease tell you getting a love affair going with your disease isn't worth it. What does that mean? In other words, because I am so in love with my sobriety, don't let anybody saying it's not worth it. You're putting too much time and effort into it. You're going to relapse. These are the naysayers out there. These are the people that don't want to see you succeed. Those are probably people that are drinking or drugging themselves and they don't they want to keep you behind with them and not see you accelerate and, and go forward in your life. Don't let them bring you down. Please. Give yourself what you deserve and what, if you don't have it already, what you need to have. I am so happy we have had this little talk about the five reasons that I love my sobriety. I hope that you have a joyous love affair with your addiction uh, by battling with sobriety. Have that love affair. Just don't tell your, your spouse that you're in love with sobriety, that you're having an affair. It's just a joke, but it's an affair that your husband or wife wouldn't mind sharing. That's how important sobriety is. That's how important it is to battle addiction. Be in love with your sobriety friends. Be in love with them. Together, as a community, you all can beat addiction. So that was this segment of five reasons to fall in love with sobriety. I'm just going to go over the five reasons real quick one more time. And I like to do this consistently and constantly because I want you to remember. Number one, no fear, dread, feeling, shame, or guilt. Number two, meet the best friends ever. Number three, not having, uh, excuse me, not hating yourself anymore. Number four, remembering when you have fun. And number five, being the person you want to be. Now. Let's go into the contact information. I already discussed my website, which is www.clearviews.info. My phone number, cell phone, 631-599-0218. You can call me on that and you can text me on that at any time that you'd like to do so. Also, you have my email address. It's ralph.friedrichs at yahoo.com. That's R-A-L-F. Dot F R I E D R I C H S at yahoo.com. You also have my business number, and I'm going to repeat this again. I am the only person that listens to those messages, I'm the only person that has access to it. It's 844 393 9355, and then you have Facebook. You can private message me there. I also have a page for clearviews.info. The clearviews.info page is linked up to my website, www.clearviews.info. So whatever I put on the Facebook page gets automatically transferred in a news flash onto my website. And that's done immediately. So now we went over my contact information. Let's dive right into certain methods. And we I do this in every video, and it's important that I do this. There are three major methods that I talk about. Number one is my own method. Number two is AA and number three is a treatment center. Now let's compare my method to AA. AA has a 12-step program. I came up with a 12-step plus four, so 16-step alternative program or steps to, to compare to theirs. They both achieve the same goal and that's for you to achieve sobriety. The only difference between my steps and the steps by AA is that the steps by AA are written in such a language that it is not that easy to understand. It's, it's, it's very straight, uh, it's very um, uh, uh, textbook type compared to how I put it which is more in the layman's terms. So I have 16 steps, they have 12 steps. 
My method allows you to go on my website. You can look at my videos. My method has my videos. These are training educational videos because we always talk about how it is so important that you educate yourself during your sobriety, during your battle with addiction. Education, continuous education is super, super important. So that's my method. AA does that also. They have the 12 steps, which is kind of like an educational tool also, but they also do things. I think I went to two, three, maybe four meetings. They do things that are similar to mine. Uh, the only difference is, is that you're in a meeting and you have maybe 20 people. When I do this, it's you and me pretty much because there's nobody else with you. I'm sure watching. If there is, it's maybe one or two people. So it's more on one on one. And when you go on my website, it's just you and the website. It's almost like distance learning, online education for sobriety. That's pretty much what I offer you. Now, if you, for some reason, feel that you cannot be at home alone and trust yourself and not going to drink and not going to smoke, if you need to have that supervision, do yourself a favor. If you have the insurance, well, if you have Medicaid, it's a lot easier, but check into a rehab center. Now, if you don't have that, I found out after investigating through a friend of mine down in Florida who's heavily involved in addiction programs that they do offer, some states offer programs that are state-sponsored for people that don't have insurance or Medicaid. If you don't have any of those, contact me. I will try to help you and find a rehab center if you cannot do it on your own. Uh, pretty much the way I was able to do this, excuse me, <clears throat> was to contact my friend who is a uh, CEO for a, uh, an addiction center or an addiction website that offers centers. He gave me a phone number. I called that phone number. They gave me a phone number, etc. And you get the message how I'm how I was able to do this. It was just going after the next lead until I finally landed a rehab center. Unfortunately. It ended up being really, um, I hate to put it in these terms, a waste of time because the individual that we were seeking to go into this rehab center decided, well, I'm not going in there to face detox completely. I want a doctor to prescribe medication to me as I'm detoxing. So you're taking in medication and detoxing. That's counterproductive. It doesn't work. When I quit drinking, it was to quit drinking. It wasn't to substitute vodka for rum or beer. It's either you detox totally or you're not rock bottom yet. You, you, you can't have it both ways. So I hate to put it in a way that I did say that it ended up being a waste of time. The only benefit or good thing that came out of this is the fact that I educated myself that there are programs that are out there for people with no insurance and no Medicaid. So that was a big plus. I say this in every video. If you're watching me and you, for some reason, you're so far deep involved in your drugs and alcohol and you're feeling sick and you're feeling bad and your chest is hurting, your head is hurting, do yourself a favor. Call 911. Just call them. Call 911. Let the medical professionals help you. And they will help you. But you need to make that phone call. So we went over the five reasons to fall in love with, uh, love with sobriety. We went over different methods, uh, which is my method, AA, Rehab Center. Now those three methods, with any other method, do not work if you don't include my and your God in the plan. Because God is in our lives daily. God needs to guide you down the right path. We're all addicted for a reason. Yes, we have a disease and it's uncontrollable unless we accept that we can control it. But with the grace of God, he can help you go through sobriety, go through your addiction and, 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 and seek 100% sobriety for the rest of your life. But you need it to include God. And that's not just with sobriety. It's with anything you do in life, whether it's financials, whether it's relationship, you need to have God in your life. Now, if you've gotten so bad like I did before June and every avenue you took was just a negative uh, situation for yourself, accept the fact that you have a disease, come up with an action plan and ask God to guide you the right way between God 
and your action plan, you will succeed in sobriety. That I will promise you. So include God in your plan. So now we talked about those things and I just want to constantly emphasize the fact is that if you for some reason decide today, June, uh, excuse me, August 9th, 2014, that today is rock bottom day for you, that you want to go forward and fall in love with sobriety and, 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 and see all the benefits sobriety does offer, if that's what you want to do, you need to write a little note to yourself and put numbers down on what do you expect out of sobriety? What do you expect? Do you expect things like the list that I went through? Do you expect honesty? Do you expect respect? Do you expect uh, to be needed? Do you expect caring and trustworthiness out of yourself? Put those things down. They will help you achieve sobriety because now you initiated a action plan. In that action plan, you should also put down what method will you be using to seek sobriety. Is it AA? Is it a rehab center, a 30, 60, 90 day rehab center? Is it the way I do it, which is pretty much what you see is what you get here? Folks, the way I do it works so well for me because each and every time I do a video, each and every time I go on my website to work on it, it reminds me of the disease that I carry within myself and it reminds me what I need to do to continuously remember about my disease. So when I make these videos, I'm helping you and you're helping me by watching them. So as long as I have an audience, I continuously do these videos and, and they constantly remind you because today's reminder for me which started this afternoon when I wrote these things up here was why do I love sobriety so much because can you imagine if I didn't have a reason to love sobriety I wouldn't be sober if I had more of a reason to love addiction I'd be addicted still but I'm not I am in love with sobriety for the reasons mentioned within this segment and there's a reason that all my videos are called Take Your Life Back because on June 22nd, 2013, I took my life back. I took it away from the disease. And I said, I want to continue living. At the age of 51, I'm not ready to pack it in. I am not ready to let that disease control me anymore. So if today, August 9th, 2014, is your first day, it will make such a great realistically good life for the rest of your life now what does that mean it goes back to my one statement that I say a sober today makes for a better tomorrow if you accept the fact that you have an addiction and you accept the fact that you cannot fight the addiction alone because you really can't you cannot just say Ralph I'm addicted and I'm gonna quit drinking and not educate yourself and not seek treatment not see to seek a recovery plan not have an action plan it won't happen I guarantee you I've been there I've done it six seven times I would say I quit drinking I'll never drink again I might even swear in people's lives that's how messed up I was it's really bad when you come to a point where you swear in somebody's life that you'll never drink again and 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 you go against that with a sober mind I could almost shoot myself for even wanting to, to think that I would have done that. But when I made those statements, I was not me. Is that a reason to forgive myself? Absolutely not. But I need to live for today and for tomorrow and not worry about that anymore. Because we are here today. Today is our day. Tomorrow's our future. Yesterday is gone. We live and we learn and we move forward. Are you ready to move forward today? I hope you are. And I hope that my video today has left an impact on you. I really do. And I'd like for you folks to truly reach out to me. Call me, 631-599-0218. Email me at ralph.friedrichs at yahoo.com. That's R-A-L-F dot F-R-I-E-D-R-I-C-H-S at yahoo.com. Reach out to me. Go on my website. 
you can go to the comment section and leave me a comment tell me how you feel about your addiction and your sobriety and tell me how I can possibly help you succeed how can I help you use me as a crutch because believe it or not you folks my audience you are my crutch I come across that I'm very confident but deep down inside I'm not that confident I become more confident when I speak to you what does that mean am I gonna relapse absolutely not it does mean I am an infant in sobriety because a year and two months is really nothing I'm an infant in sobriety and I'm going through the maturity stages of becoming stronger and becoming uh, uh, more mature as a sober person so start today because a sober today makes for a better tomorrow and I say this in every video if you believe it in here in your head you'll achieve it out there out there being in your living room out there being wherever you might be watching me if you believe it here you'll achieve it there but you have to start believing empty words mean nothing now I just wanna again reach out to a good friend of mine up north congratulations on your first month anniversary I hope all is well I haven't heard from you in a few days I'm assuming that you're in an area that doesn't have any cell phone or internet connection I trust that you're slowing down on your work schedule because we spoke about this about seven videos ago about stressors what is a stressor a stressor is a uh, situation you run into in life if you work too much that's a stressor if you uh, go have financial issues those are stressors stressors give you that urge and temptation to go back to the drinking go back to the smoking or the snorting keep away from that but most importantly congratulations job well done on your first month anniversary you have gone through the hardest stage which is the first two weeks and you're still sober and you deserve such an applause for that and 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 I really appreciate the fact that you're trying so hard because when you try and you have an action plan and you have your notes and you watch videos and you go on websites and you go to AA and you go to rehab centers you become a stronger sober person or you can just sit in the corner and say I I'm not drinking anymore see how far that gets you you'll have a relapse guarantee you you need to have a structured plan for sobriety you need to fall in love with sobriety as much as you love your wife or your husband there's two different loves one is a whole different love your husband and wife but the equal level of love has to be there with sobriety so that's what you need to do we're at the 43 minute mark again so I'm gonna cut this uh, within a minute or two so I just want to say thank you very much for coming by I hope to God that I see you real soon with another video, preferably in about two days. Have a great day, have a great night, and more importantly, have a sober, sober weekend. I thank you very much for coming by. Have a sober weekend, and God bless you.